Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nilsson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Two toys, buddy. I think we made it. <laughs> well, I think we had enough time to uh, punch some holes and figure out where we need to be. Absolutely. Can't right. fish without holes. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, I'm fishing with Joel Nelson, and we're on Leech Lake. And we're going about things quite a bit differently than we normally do. Uh, we're coming out here now with just about two hours left of daylight. Typically, we're out here before the sun comes up. And the plan today is we're gonna get in on, hopefully, a good early ice, shallow water, night walleye bite. Uh, we've got some time now yet today where we can kind of punch around and get ourselves really refined as far as location is concerned. Uh, Joel and I are really excited to be here on Leech Lake. One thing that uh, uh, we've been talking about during the drive on the way up here is in nine years of filming for In-Depth Outdoors, uh, we've never done a winter walleye show on Leech Lake. So today, we're gonna change that. We kind of feel like we've uh, omitted, <laughs> accidentally of course, a great body of water and of course a great species. So stick around with a little luck. We're gonna have some big walleyes on the ice uh, by lantern light. So uh, let's get the augers going. Let's figure out where the top of this structure is. It's gotta be close. All right, so uh, Joel and I have kind of divided the labor here a little bit. He's setting up the uh, ice house. Uh, the otter is definitely gonna be a, a, a very welcomed place to warm up tonight. We're gonna to stay out here as long as we can, and of course the temperatures will drop after sundown. And what I'm doing is I'm setting out some tip-ups. Uh, Joel's got the ice house set up on top of the shallowest part of this piece of structure. He's up there in about uh, eight and a half, nine foot of water. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of walking tip-ups down out towards deeper water. We want to cover a couple different depth ranges, so the tip-ups will allow us to do that, yet we can still get back in that otter and warm up if we need to. So uh, just standard tip-up approach here. Going to set some uh, uh, rainbows and some shiners about two feet up off the bottom. Uh, sun's getting pretty low on the horizon. We did run into some uh, perch earlier while we were really kind of figuring out where we wanted to set up for the, the evening, but that bite's died off now. Now hopefully we can get some of those walleyes that Leech Lake is famous for to come up here and make snacks out of these minnows that we've got hanging underneath the tip-ups. Or of course Joel and I will be fishing spoons and maybe even some ripping wraps. So I'm going to put a fresh minnow on this one and get it down. You know, this is the kind of nighttime bite that I really like. It's, uh, it's kind of like hunting, it's kind of like trapping. We're coming out here, we've done some homework, we've looked at a topo map, we've kind of picked out our spot, and we're setting a trap. We're getting ready for these fish to move up. It's about the anticipation, right? So you've got a beautiful sun going down uh, beyond the horizon, and uh, I can't think of any place I'd rather be right now. 
Introducing the new wireless pan cam camera system from Markham Technologies. The groundbreaking interface that allows an angler to wirelessly monitor and control the left right pan of a remote camera from up to 300 feet away. The Markham pan cam system transmits a live video stream via Wi Fi back to your Apple or Android device, and the free Markham app is even capable of connecting to multiple cameras at the same time for multi camera on ice coverage. This winter, take full control of your underwater camera with Markham Technologies wireless pan cam camera system. Got him. I got one, Joel. Nice. I don't know yet. Yeah, nice, not nice, don't know. Oh, so cool. Yeah, definitely walleye. Oh man, I love fishing like this. We've got just a great combination tonight. Beautiful conditions. I mean, it's not overly warm by any means, but light winds, tolerable temps, and we've got fish coming up shallow to crash perch. And this one just smoked this tingler spoon. Oh yeah, nice big walleye head coming up. Here he is, come here. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. <laughs> first one of the night, I'm betting it's gonna be the first of many. Gorgeous fish. Fishing just a real natural perch colored spoon, tipping it with a minnow head, just a little meat for scent. And what we're doing is we're set up just off to the edge of the shallowest portion of this structure. We've got slightly deeper water behind us. It's not, you know, 50 feet deep by any means. It's about 13, 14 feet. It comes up to a chute and feeds up to the top of this structure. And we're counting on fish like this using that chute as a feeding lane. And this one fell right into the trap. Gorgeous fish. Catching them by lantern light out here on Leech Lake. Man, I hope we get a whole bunch like this tonight. Such a great walleye fishery. See you later, and oh, she's ready to go. Ah, perfect. All right, here's what we're using. This is one of my favorites. It's just a 1 8 ounce tingler spoon in natural perch color. Of course, this lake is just loaded with perch. Back side of the spoon is gold colored. I'll probably switch it around throughout the night. Right now we're kind of in prime time. There's still a little bit of available light for the fish to use and feed. Later on, we'll probably switch to something a little bit more aggressive, a larger glow version of a, this kind of spoon, or maybe even a, uh, um, an ultralight rip and wrap would probably work really, really well. So for now, anyway, I'm gonna give it another shot. All right. I need to go get my Marinos. I'm out. As you can see, I've got the uh, otter box out. I've been going through rods, changing presentations, mixing it up. I'm back to a spoon, which is what James was using. But I'm trying to match my activity level on my jigging stroke to the activity level of the fish. We've seen a couple fish move in, but uh, not really act as aggressively as they were earlier. So I'm really starting to slow things down a touch and I'm just ever so slightly tickling that rod tip. I'm, I'm not ripping it. I'm not wildly jigging it like I was before. Got another one, Joel. Nice. He does not feel as big as the last one. Definitely a walleye. This is one of my favorite bites of the winter. Every winter that we get on this type of situation where the fish are up shallow, feeding after dark, they're so aggressive. That fish came in at the same level as my bait and just pounded it. All right, here he comes, getting close. Ooh, there's a nice head shake. Maybe he's bigger than I thought. Nope, I think this is gonna fall into the eater class and I want some of both. Oh yeah, nice fish gonna be about uh, 17 maybe 17 and a half inches long somewhere in that range perfect for the pan and I want to take a few home and there's that same spoon perch front gold back tingler spoon been tipping it with a minnow head my guess is it's not magic right now I think they're up here feeding real aggressively and they're probably willing to hit most anything you put in front of their face and that one uh, had the spoon in its mouth but was not hooked very well so Lucky to have that one on the ice. That one's going home with me. Should make great table fare. Well, 
Joel, that uh, that big one was not our only fish of the night. I'm thankful for that. Heck yeah. You know, you can catch a fish or two most anywhere, I would imagine, um, at this time of night. It's prime time. Fish are coming up out of the deeper water, up onto these shallow fat flats, and they're feeding aggressively. The trick is to just find an area uh, that gives you an advantage, that kind of funnels more fish in, a high percentage area, and I think we've done that. I mean, I've spent a lot of time out here at night, not on this particular body of water, but other similar bodies of water like Mille Lacs, and it's real easy to try to get on this pattern and miss. So for us, finding a prominent piece of structure that extends off these shallow feeding areas out into deeper water is really the key component to trying to figure out one of these bites. If you just pull up anywhere on the edge of a featureless flat, it's very unlikely that you're gonna catch any number of walleyes on any given night. If I can stay in this hole all night, I will. Boop, all right, back in action. So James has talked a lot about our setup, and he's talked a lot about that chute that's behind us that fish are using to move up onto this piece of structure. But here's how to find it. When you're looking at a contour map, you're gonna be looking for V's or U's. Sharp angles that are tightly spaced, those V's are gonna point right to the top of the structure you're trying to fish. So fish in the crease of that V all the way up throughout the night until you get to the top of that piece of structure. That's exactly how we found this spot today, and that's what's been working for us right now. Delivering power on demand with the push of a button. The new 50 volt lithium laser from Strike Master is capable of making short work of as many as 56 holes in 24 inches of ice on a single charge. Featuring many of the same components found in all of Strike Master's power augers, the lithium laser cuts no corners and delivers uncompromising durability. This winter, don't settle for anything less than the dependable Strike Master lithium laser. Ice fishing's first full power, high performance electric ice auger. Here he comes. Yeah. Fish on. <laughs> yes, I just switched. You can see right next to me, I've got about every trick in the book ready here. We're a little bit after dark now and things have changed. There we go. Ah, not the biggest fish, but this is a great eater. And my first walleye so far, like I was saying, Things have changed a little bit. We've had to shorten up our jigging strokes, the, the rip and wraps, all the stuff I was doing before to try and get those fish to bite. It never really went, so I started switching up to things. I saw James was catching them on a spoon. I just mixed it up, went to a rattling spoon here, gave us a little bit bigger profile, kept the vibration, but also gave us more of that spoon profile that we've been looking for that James had been having success with earlier. So. Well, he's not, a, he's not a world beater, but a great start. So we're gonna keep it going here. Bait up and get down again. There's more down there. There he is. Oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a giant fish, but not bad either. Basically what we're doing now is we're just doing shifts. Go in the otter, throw the heater on a little bit, warm up, oh, good eater. There we go. Nice fish. You know, we had that uh, larger uh, fish or two right there at sundown. And since then, you know, we've been getting in this real nice class of eaters, which we'll take. We've been experimenting now with uh, some different baits. I started off with that uh, tingler spoon. And since it got really dark, what we've noticed is the fish just don't want a lot of movement to the spoons. In fact, if you're overworking it, they'd come up nose at it and they'd take off. So what we've been doing is just fine little jiggles. I mean, think of it almost like you're presenting a bait to a bluegill. Instead of large jig strokes and let that spoon fall where the fish could really easily lose sight of it, or it seems like it's too aggressive to that walleye and they just back off, just little tiny little quivers like you do for a bluegill really seem to be doing the trick. And what we've done is we've switched over to rattle spoons. And so we're sitting there quivering those baits. It's dark and uh, that little clack that little rattle seems to be making the difference, getting those fish to come in and investigate. And of course, at that point, they see the minnow head, they smell that minnow head, and they latch on. So just some small adjustments here throughout the night. We started out more aggressive, and now we're really slowing it down, giving every fish the chance they need to make a decision on whether to eat or not. And that one's going home. That's perfect eater as far as I'm concerned. Come on, buddy. All right. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> It's been a little bit of a waiting game, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, this feels a little nicer. Come on out of the deucer. Woo! 
We're in shallow water here waiting them out and uh, like I said earlier it's kind of like setting a trap and sometimes you just need the patience for that trap to spring and they've been coming through but we've had to uh, we've had to earn our keep that's for sure that's a nice fish. It's never easy at night <laughs> everything slows down nobody can see anything including the fish they can't see we can't see you know we're just basically scraping up fish but I mean this is a blast the weather is so good beautiful fish man. I think you had a really good point what you're talking about earlier slowing that thing down yeah. we're getting fish to come into the screen by being slightly aggressive but man alive you really have to slow it down and let that fish zero in on it otherwise like you said they can't see it easily either. It's more like fishing bluegills. Yeah. You know, a lot of times <laughs> tickle, you, tickle. <laughs> uh, you talk to guys that uh, fish in hard houses, they'll tell you that their set lines, you know, they're, they're uh, the lines that are uh, in the rattle reels will produce most of their fish. We've got two tip ups out that haven't been touched all night long and we're catching all of our fish on jigs. And I think it's because we're making that big adjustment. I mean, if we were, you know, trying to start the lawnmower doing the huge <laughs> pulls, those fish are never going to see the baits. So they're not going to hit it. Right. So that, that's just the adjustment we've made that are de it's definitely putting fish on the ice. Yeah. This is a nice fish. Yeah. I, that's another one for the, uh, the pan if you want definitely. it. Definitely. Beautiful fish. I'd love to eat it. <laughs> you know, with the time we're putting in on this, uh, I don't think anybody would begrudge us a meal of fish. <laughs> we're earning it. Well, I'm not going to catch any more fish here talking to you, so I'm off to the next hole. Good deal. Oh, that's a nice one, bud. Not too bad. Craftsmanship and precision are just words until you add driving passion and a knowledge of what defines rod building excellence. Tuned up custom rods are built with a perfect blend of rod balance and action. A truly custom experience achieved only with the highest quality materials. From the handle to the last guide and every thread wrap in between, it's these components along with an attention to detail that makes our customized rods a tuned up custom. Okay, I think this is going to be trouble here. I've had this fish on my uh, LX9 up and down and it had this real familiar look to me. Didn't look walleye-ish. Man, the ice is just popping and heaving. I think this is going to be one of those other species that uh, Leech Lake is famous for. It's going to be an eel pout, pretty sure. If it's a walleye, it's going to be a real big one. Come on. Just in case it is, I'm going to get this out of here. There we go. These things are so slippery. Yeah, it's a big eel pout. You're going to fish these uh, northern Minnesota clear bodies of water at night, you're going to catch some of these. There's no way around it. You know, they used to have quite a stigma to them. People were, uh, they would consider them a, a rough fish, a trash fish. They'd throw them on the ice just to let them freeze. But uh, now more and more, people are eating them. I'm early for the eel pout festival. Look at that. Face only a mother could love there. <laughs> They're a pretty cool fish though. You get uh, the sun down. We're towards middle of the night now and these guys come out to play. But they fight real good and they're actually good to eat. But we've got a nice mess of walleye so I don't feel like I have to add to that. Tonight anyway. So we'll let this fish go. There we go. But that's a uh, that's a 30 incher, but not the one I was looking for. We're gonna let the eel pout go. Such cool markings though. They're a very neat fish. <sighs> I had uh, visions of a 30 incher tonight, but like I said, not that one. But they're fun nonetheless. And you pretty much can't uh, expect to get through a night out here on Leech Lake and not catch at least one. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Another fish. <laughs> you know, to me, the two most obvious parts of this bite are the two most important. I got them stuck at the bottom of the hole here. Come on, buddy. We're obviously fishing at night and we're obviously fishing shallow, but it begs mentioning the fact that we're fishing in eight to 10 feet of water. And a lot of people fish for walleyes through the ice their entire lives without going shallower than 10 feet of water. But early ice, 
that's where these fish are feeding, especially in clear bodies of water and especially at night. Again, people will fish these lakes and they'll go and they'll, they'll never spend any time at night and they can ride an entire lake and its walleye bite off just without ever fishing the right times of day. Get him loose. There we go. If you have a clear body of water that you've had trouble catching walleyes in, try fishing at night. Try fishing shallow, especially early in the year, and give it another try because I know of several lakes that many people have told me, just there's walleyes in there, I know there are, they're in the survey, but they just won't bite, they're not hungry, they're not feeding, all kinds of excuses. Give it a try at night, it can really change your luck. Get another minnow. I've got one down there that is just, he's not sure. The key to this pattern, or, or what we look for, this western side of Leech and the main basin, the main portion of the lake, there's just huge flats that go on at a very consistent depth for hundreds of yards. And the key and where to start is always in relationship to deeper water. But anything you can find along that edge that breaks out towards deeper water that uh, is some kind of prominent piece of structure, maybe it be a, a finger point or an inside turn, something that's gonna gather those fish, uh, that's a top priority area to visit uh, when you're looking to get in on one of these night bites. You know, one of the last things you'd wanna do is just jump up on top of one of these flats uh, in eight foot of water, let's say, with eight foot of water around you for 500 yards in every direction. At that point, it's just blind luck if a fish is gonna find you. So it just all comes down to finding those pieces of structure that will increase the chances of having multiple fish come through the area that you're sitting over. I can't catch him, I give up. All right, it's yours, you drop down, have at it. I'm gonna kick that hole out just a bit. You're confident. <laughs> Oh, that's the, I didn't have a minnow on mine. Oh. That's why. Ah, <laughs> details. No, yeah, there, there he is. is. He's going to do it. <laughs> Give me a break, <laughs> you dog. Well, it helped. Ah. <laughs> Helps to have a minnow head. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> like you said, uh, not the great, greatest, biggest fish in the world, but that's a heck of an eater right there. You scooped me. Well, sharing is something that's pretty nice. Oh yeah, he wasn't going anywhere. Pops right out. This. Well, I thought I was doing my best dancing, but uh, sometimes just a minnow, it wasn't gonna work. Well, I don't know what you think, but uh, we throw that one uh, in with the rest of the, uh, the fish we got tonight. I think that's more than plenty. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's been just a heck of a night. Well, one thing I gotta say about you, Joel, I love the fact that no matter what harebrained scheme I come up with, Anytime I ask you in, you're like, double down, I'm in, man. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> this stuff's cool. But Well, it was. Uh, this is our first time on the ice together this winter. It won't be our last. I'm sure glad you're able to come along with me. Uh, where are we going to be next week? Um, somewhere in Wisconsin. Uh, species and destination unknown, but I'm pretty sure that we're going to go to Wisconsin and uh, see what we can uh, uncover over there. So from Joel and I, for everybody that tuned in, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at In Depth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.